Hello everybody, welcome to Boxing Science. My name's Danny Wilson, and I'm gonna give you top five tips on how to boost your cardio for boxing performance. At Boxing Science, we've trained numerous champions from British, Commonwealth, to European and world champions, helping athletes improve their high intensity performance, go through the gears, and also be 12 rounds fit, being able to last the 12 round distance and perform and win titles. So our conditioning methods have been tried and tested at the very top level. We've also put these in a range of different programs that have been accessed all around the world. The sessions have been challenging, but also been hugely beneficial for amateurs and also novice athletes. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five tips on how we make sure that athletes get fitter and faster and able to dominate in the ring. Tip number one is to perform red zone conditioning. So the red zone is a term given to 90% of the maximal heart rate and above. And this is where most of our cardiovascular improvements make. So basically training the heart and the arterial system to deliver oxygen to the working muscles. This is not only great for high intensity adaptations, but also replicates the demands of the sport. As we know that most boxers spend 60 to 80% of time during sparring in this 90% maximum heart rate. So when they go on long road runs or doing recovery runs, they're not matching the demands, the high intensity demands of the sport. We need to be able to perform in the red zone, not be as fatigued in the red zone, and also be able to produce high forces and high speeds whilst over 90% of maximum heart rate. And there's quite a few different ways we can do this. The gold standard way is to do four minutes on, two minutes off for four to six repetitions. So this is a gold standard protocol done by Hel Gerud et al. 2001, 2002, I think. This four minutes on, two minute on protocol helps increase VO2 max to help improve their time in the red zone and also the high intensities in the red zone. Then we perform pyramid conditioning where we're going through the gears, going from four minutes on, two minutes on, one minute reps, and then through to 30 second or even 15 second sprints whilst in the red zone. And we also perform our high intensity circuits, and this is challenging, not only that high intensity performance, but ability to move fast, dynamic, produce high forces in a fatigued state, and also challenging concentration, which is really important when you're in the boxing ring. So tip number one is to perform red zone conditioning. Tip number two is to perform sprint training. That's either repeated sprint or sprint interval training. We just mentioned the importance of the high intensity, repeated nature of boxing. You have to produce high forces, high speeds, over hundreds of punches, hundreds of times during competition and thousands of times during the boxing. So we need to improve an athlete's ability to perform high intensities and have the ability to repeat and endure them high intensity bouts. So imagine you throw a flurry of punches. This might be 10 in three seconds or maybe even 20 over five or 10 seconds. And this high spike in activity can make your arms feel heavy and your legs feel heavy. And this is often referred to as lactic acid. And we say in uh, boxing sciences, it's muscular acidosis. So how acidic the muscle cell is. The feeling of being heavy in your arms and your legs, this is something that an athlete needs to be able to tolerate, but also need to control. We need to create these high force, high speed actions, not just shoot up in your muscular acidosis. So there's a few different ways we can go about it. The first one is sprint interval training. So this is where we do 30 second max effort sprints with three minutes recovery, we just perform this four or up to six repetitions. And this is challenging an athlete's ability to produce maximum intensity and being able to tolerate them high amounts of blood lactate. This also helps the muscle extract and utilize oxygen. The oxygen that's been delivered whilst in the red zone needs to be extracted from the blood and utilized by the muscle. If you want to find out more about the scientific process behind this, We've got a range of different videos, just type in 30 second maximum sprints, boxing science. And also we've got a full workshop on this on the boxing science and train like a champion membership. Second type of sprint training that we do is repeated sprint training. This is where we do something like 12 seconds on, 48 seconds off for 15 to 20 repetitions. And this is challenging our ability to repeat them high 
speed actions, but also doing something called muscle buffering capacity. This is being able to control the amount of blood lactate that's being produced. And being in, within this zone, we normally say it's between 10 and 40 millimoles per litre. And in this zone, it helps your body being able to adapt and control these spikes in acidosis. So this is essentially helping you repeat high force actions over a longer distance of time without becoming fatigued. So this is why we utilize this so much for boxing science. You can also see the champions of today, Devin Haney, Nara Nure, Javonta Davis, all utilize sprint training as part of their physical preparation. So tip number three is to perform active recovery sessions. The reason why we're mentioning this now is because a lot of boxers, coaches and athletes question when we start mentioning red zone running, sprint interval training, you know, where do we put the base work? Where do we put the aerobic base work? Where do we do our road runs and everything like that? Basically, we're getting a lot of aerobic adaptations from the sprint interval training and the red zone training. It doesn't look like the normal kind of aerobic conditioning work that most boxers do. However, we do need to do active recovery runs to just have a little bit of zone three action where we're working predominantly aerobically. This is also good for burning calories because when our athletes are looking to make weight, can't just keep hammering them with really intense sessions. So we perform active recovery sessions, which is in within zone three, which is between 60 and 70% of the maximum heart rate. We perform different types of this. So not just going on a long steady road run, we're doing more of that kind of interval work within going to them heart rate, 60 to 70% of the maximum heart rate. So for like four minute intervals through to 30 second intervals, and we can also perform tempo runs. And what we find with this is that athletes are hitting higher speeds whilst at a lower heart rate. And this is much better for their running gait instead of just going on a long plod, getting tight in the hips, high impact forces through the feet, and also reducing overall running distance. So for example, on a tempo run, on a 40 minute run, a boxer would probably do six, seven K on one of these tempo sessions where they're accumulating that time in their aerobic zone they're actually doing it with a lot less distance, probably like a third, even a quarter of the distance. So this is less kind of distance and wear and tear on the body during training camp. When the training camp is so intense, it's really important to keep our athletes fresh. Tip number four is to make sure that you're putting this all together as a very structured program. To make sure that we're progressing our athletes and then having effective deloads. And also we're hitting the right amount of sessions to be able to stimulate that adaptation. Sessions such as sprint interval training, the 30 seconds on, three minutes off, that only takes three or four weeks to create them adaptations. There's anywhere between nine and 12 sessions. With the muscle buffering training, that takes like anywhere between 10 and 15 sessions. So that's something like four or five weeks. And then for red zone conditioning, this takes a little bit longer. We're looking for about six or eight weeks of doing that. So we've got to be really careful in where we're putting these training types in part of training camp. And also with the 30 second maximum sprints, these are very fatiguing. So you can't be doing this at the same time that you're sparring. So we normally put the 30 second max out sprints at the right at the start of training camp. And then we're performing something like muscle buffering or the red zone conditioning for the main bulk of the camp. And when we've got extra time off, let's say if we've got somebody in the off season, that's a good time to spend on the red zone conditioning because we know that we've got plenty of weeks to be able to improve the athlete. Then you need to put that into a training week. You wanna be doing three high intensity conditioning sessions per week. You want to make sure that there's at least a day in between these high intensity conditioning sessions. We also wanna put in an active recovery session in between to make sure that athlete is staying fresh while still getting fit in a full program to hit the right conditioning types at the right time, but also being able to do it across a week to make sure that you're not accumulating fatigue across the week. So the fifth and final tip, and by means not the least important, probably really, really important and a priority for you, is to make sure that you're monitoring the sessions. You can monitor what the athlete is doing in terms of how they're performing, how fast are they running, the intensity that they're producing, duration of the reps times the reps and the sets to make sure that you're monitoring training load and setting some goals for the session. And then also how the athlete is responding physiologically. 
the heart rate needs to be monitored by heart rate monitor, especially during the red zone conditioning sessions to make sure that they're going above 90% maximum heart rate. And then if you're doing repeated sprint training, it'd be ideal if you could analyze blood lactate. You can do this with a really expensive machine that we have at Boxing Science or more affordable machine, the Lactate Pro Analyzer. More affordable, but maybe not be in your budget. So what you can do is use rate of perceived exertion. That's RP for short. With a sprint interval training session where you're going to maximum fatigue, 30 seconds on, three minutes off, you want to be hitting around about nine or 10. Really, it needs to be 10 if it's max out effort. And then when you're doing repeated sprint training, when you're looking for improving your muscle buffering capacity, that needs to be about a seven or eight out of 10. So instead of investing into these really high tech machines, you can just use RPE to make sure that your athlete is hitting that right intensity to promote the adaptation that you're targeting. Okay guys, so that's the end of the video. They're my top five tips for boosting cardio. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And you can take a lot away from this and start implementing into your own training. If you still need some more structure and guidance on this, why don't you check out the Boxing Science website? We've got the Boxing Science membership, the Train Like Champion membership, and also if you're wanting to purchase one of our eBooks, you can get 50% off by using this code in your first purchase. Hopefully see you on the next video of Boxing Science.